good. We are taking the next attribute of our extremes of several variables. In this session, we are taking the constraint optimization. This has to do with when you have an objective function, and this function is to either minimize or maximize something. When we are dealing with these things, then we know we are looking at extremes. It can be of a single variable or more than one variable as we are considering. But in this case, we have some conditions attached and these conditions are called constraints. Now we have a way of solving this, not using the second derivative test because of the constraints attached. We want to use a method called the Lagrange multiplier. But the question is when do we use this method? So Lagrange multiplier. You can only use this method if your constraint has an equality in it. If it's an inequality, then it has its own techniques for solving. So for our class, we are taking that of the equality constraint. The Lagrange multiplier is such that you can only solve when you have the grad of your function, that's the objective function, equated to the grad lambda of your constraint, such that the constraint is not equal to zero. So it means the objective function here is, to, is the f, the constraint is the j. Let's take an example. This example has to do with um, some firm trying to produce products. We want to find the optimal level of production. The products are three. Product one is x, product two, y, product three, z. And then we are giving the production model as p of x. So someone will say this is my same as the f of x, y, z. If you want to use f and j, is equal to 4x plus 8y plus 6z. And we are also giving some constraints, manufacturing constraints. For this question, it has clearly stated there's a constraint, which is our same mind j of x, y is equal to some x squared plus 4y squared plus 2z squared should be less or equal to 800. So I can solve for equality aspect of the constraint using Lagrange multiplier. How would I do that? So my grad of p should be equal to lambda my grad of g. Grad is derivative as we've already considered. And so it means that partial derivative of p respect to all the variables given the same thing to my constraint. So let's take it. Partial derivative respect to x, I get 4. I have 8 here and then 6, as you would agree. And then lambda constraint part, I have 2x respect to y, 8y respect to z becomes 4z. I can expand this and have it as 2 lambda x, 8 lambda y, 4 lambda z, 4, 8, 6. Now because they are equal, it means I can equate term by term. And so 4 equal to 2 lambda x as equation 1, 8 equal to 8 lambda y, and then 6 is equal to 4 lambda 2. I'll label them as equation 1, 2, and 3. So equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. From equation 1, you can see that x will be equal to 4 on 2 lambda, which is the same as 2 over lambda. From equation 2, my y can be set to 8 over 8 lambda, which is the same as 1 over lambda. And from equation 3, my z can be set to some... 6 over 4 lambda, which is the same as 3 on 2 lambda. Now, is this the product we are looking for? They are given in terms of the multiplier lambda. That is what we must find. And to be able to find this, well, we must satisfy the constraint. So my x, y, z must satisfy the constraint such that x squared plus 4y squared plus 2z squared is equal to 800. So let's do the substitution together. 
the first term I get 2 over lambda all square. For here, 1 over lambda all square plus 2, 3 over 2 lambda all square is equal to 800. So you take your time and do the expansion from here. So I'm getting um, 4 over lambda square plus 4 over lambda square plus 3 square is 9. 9 to 18 over 4 lambda square is equal to 800. After expansion, we simplify. And so I can quickly factorize 1 over lambda square out and then have 4 plus 4 plus you know this can have some divisions going on to be 9 on 2 is equal to 800. We have our calculators to find what this guy would be and then that will be 25 on 2 times 1 over lambda square is equal to 800. Don't forget we are looking for lambda. What I can do here is to have lambda square being equal to 1 over 800 times my 25 on 2, which is the same as 25 on 1,600. What you need to do is to take your constraint and do the substitution. If you don't do it very well, you might not get a suitable answer. And so in this place, I can easily take the square root of both sides. And you know that is going to give us plus or minus 8. So lambda is equal to plus or minus, sorry, that will be 1 over 8. 1 over 8. So my next question is, we have two values for lambda. One is positive, the other is negative. Which one do I choose? Don't forget that you would have to substitute them to get the right x, y, and then z. Now, because x, y, z's are products, it means they can be negative. We expect to have positive product should be greater than zero. Hence, I'm going to choose when lambda is positive one over eight, such that my x was giving us two over lambda, my y was giving us one over lambda, and then my z was giving us. 3 on 2 lambda. By substitution, I can find my x, y, z. And you know what is that's going to be? This is going to be 2 over 1 over 8. So that will be 16. And then this is going to be 1 over 8. That will be just 8. 3 on 2 lambda. And that will give us another... Um, solution let me check the final representations of this so i expect z to be 12 when you do the substitution right this is it for x y z after finding lambda someone would want to know how do i verify my answers the only way to verify your answers is to just plug them back into your constraint and then sure you get either less than 800 or equal to 800. So it means that you would have to, let me go back to the constraint from here. You have to ensure that for x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared, 2. Whatever I do, I should have 800. So 16 squared plus 4 times 8 square plus 2 times 12 square you have to verify that it is within the given constraint but we done solving the question um, not really because we are asked to find the maximum profit of the company it means that I'm um, solving for P X Y Z with P of 16 P of 8 P of 12 and it says you're going to get some 2,400 as the maximum profit, if I'm right. 200 cities, yeah. 
uh, we are not given the currency it's in thousand of units so 200,000 that is it and that is how you solve for constraint problems I hope you would catch up and then go through very well so I'll take the next session on more examples for Lagrange multiplier thank you